How's everyone today? I thought I'd do a little bit of a video here on gun laws. There's been a lot of talk in the country, of course, after this last shooting in Roseburg. Of course, it was funny to see the people protesting Obama's um, visit. It was kind of cool. But anyways, um, I've got some quotes here uh, from different, uh, let's call them uh, lefties. Uh, I'll share a couple of them, and then I'll talk a little bit about some laws. Okay. Again and again, we see traffickers move guns across state lines that are used to injure or kill our fellow citizens and law enforcement officers. It's high time for Congress to strengthen the lax gun laws that make it easy for dangerous people to get guns in one state and use them to commit crimes elsewhere. This was said by Ted Alcorn, Research Director of Every Town for Gun Safety. Another quote. One of the biggest, most dangerous problems with our nation's gun laws is that we have no strong, clear federal statute against gun trafficking. And that's Gabrielle Giffords and Captain Mark Kelly, co-founders of Americans for Responsible Solutions. Okay. Another quote here. Um, and this is uh, Schumer. Uh, Chuck Schumer, the U.S. Senator from New York, the Democrat. A vast network of gun runners uh, use our highways like fire, firearm freeways to traffic illegal guns to criminals. Their source is states with weak gun laws where straw buyers easily acquire... Uh, <clears throat> easily acquire large quantities of guns with no questions asked, and their destination is street criminals in states with tough gun bans. Okay, now, those all sound really scary, right? But if we actually look at the laws that just concern, just concern things like straw sales and gun running, we can look um, at the federal gun laws. Uh, U.S. Code Title 18, chapter uh, titled Firearms. And we're going to take a look at some of those laws, okay? So, for example, first thing, it's a federal felony for a resident of one state to acquire a firearm in another state. Okay, unless you know you're a dealer, and there's special you know requirements for that too. But private interstate sale between individuals trading any firearm uh, firearm is illegal, and the penalty is five years in prison for each count. So if you have like four guns, five guns, whatever, you know, you get the idea. So one gun, you run, you buy it, in, you know, at a gun show in Texas, and you take it to I don't know New York. That's five years right there. Right off the bat, we would have begun. Um, it's also a federal felony for any person to transfer, sell, trade, give, transport, or deliver any firearm to any person who the person knows or has reason to know does not reside in the same state. So already now you're looking at another five-year penalty, and that's Section 922 uh, of the federal firearm laws. So that's now another five years. Um, if an out-of-state resident buys from a dealer and makes a false or fictitious uh, statement in purchasing a firearm or exhibits false identification, guess what? Federal felony, okay? Another five years on each count. And um, if you falsely fill, uh, you know, excuse me, if you falsely file the Form 4473, that's a crime also, punishable by 10 years in prison per count. Um, so again, if you were to lie when you buy the gun, you know, you fill out your 4473 form to buy the gun, and you lie, you'll get a 10 year prison. 10 years, okay? Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous. But anyways, I mean, so, well, excuse me, five years for that. Um, it's a federal felony for a convicted felon to buy, receive, or transport, or possess any firearm or ammunition. Again, under Section 922, G1. Uh, and again, that's a 10-year federal felony, okay? So possession means even just touching a gun, okay? So again, you're looking at another 10-year federal felony. Um, again, same penalties apply if you're a fugitive from justice, okay? And so, you know, again, that's another, what, 10 years? Um, if you're a drug user, you know, which, I mean, that's a whole other issue of course. I don't know what the states that have legalized cannabis, for example, are going to be doing about this situation, but I'm sure there's going to be a little, big old lawsuit or big old court case at some point that's going to clarify those things because cannabis is now legal in, in uh, Colorado, for example. So what do they do there, right? Um, if you have more than three felony convictions, guess what? That's a 15-year sentence on each count, okay, mandatory. Um, if you are a violator of the Gun Control Act and it can be shown that you were intending to commit a state or federal felony involving the firearm, you've committed another additional federal felony. That's another up to 10 years in prison on each count. Under Section 924H, whoever knowingly transfers a firearm knowing that such firearm will be used to commit a crime of violence or drug trafficking crime shall be in prison not more than 10 years. Nah. 
Also, it's a federal felony for any individual to sell or give a firearm ammunition to a convicted felon. Guess what? Ten years in prison on each count. So you give somebody three guns, they're a felon. There you go. Um, it is also a felony for any individual to sell or give a firearm or ammunition to a fugitive from justice. Ten years in prison on each count. Okay. It is a federal felony for any individual to sell or give a firearm or ammunition to a person unlawfully using or addicted to a controlled substance. There's that drug thing again. Ten years in prison on each count. Again. Okay. Um... If any violator of the Gun Control Act provisions can be shown as intending to commit a state or federal felony involving a firearm, that individual has committed an additional federal felony, publishable by up to 10 years in prison on each count, Section 924B. So here again, there's plenty of laws on the books that are up this type of thing. But these people you know, that I quoted at the beginning of this are talking like there's no laws. I mean, like it's just like irrelevant. Um, 18 U.S.C. Uh, 922I criminalizes shipment or transfer of stolen firearm and calls for a 10-year prison sentence. Uh, 18 U.S.C. 922J covers possession of a stolen firearm and provides a 10-year prison sentence. Uh, and then there is, uh, let's say you scrape off the serial number. Guess what? Uh, 18 U.S.C. Section 922K covers possession, receipt, shipment, or interstate transfer of a firearm with an altered or obliterated serial number. And if you get convicted of that, that's another five years in prison. So basically, <laughs> if this situation was real and somebody was to have broken all these laws, they'd be in jail for like the rest of their life, easily. So I really don't see what other gun laws are needed. I mean, there's a gun law that covers just about every aspect of you know what's been going on. Um, the funny thing about a lot of these shooters lately is that they've been buying these guns completely legally. They have no criminal record. Um, Maybe they're crazy, supposedly, or, you know, taking pharmaceutical drugs or whatever. But how are you supposed to weed them out? I mean, how, how do you weed people out? You know, you don't know what people are going to intend to do with something. It's just kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, there's enough laws already out there to put away the criminal element in our society that misuses firearms. And for people to say there's no laws and that the laws are too weak, obviously... And, and we're talking about politicians, we're talking about these different organizations. Obviously, they're not doing their research, okay? And, you know, the reason that nobody ever asks, of course, for these laws to actually be enforced is, is that well, if they were enforced properly, you would put an, an end to a lot of these crimes, I believe. I mean, if you were facing, you know, I don't even want to add up everything that was here, but it'd probably be about 100 years of, <laughs> if you had broken all those laws, you know. Uh, you'd, be, you'd be in jail for a long time, not going to go anywhere. Um, so if federal laws are enforced against violent criminals and against real gun traffickers, guess what? There won't be a need for new laws. Simple as that. So, of course, that's probably why they never mention these things, you know, because they already exist. As far as, you know, people with... Uh, one reason that people like myself, for example, would be against gun shows being uh, background and checked and private sales being backgrounded is because, well, it's a private thing. It's nobody's business. If I'm selling to a person, first of all, how am I going to do a NICS check? Uh, and second of all, it's private. It's, it's my own business. So I really don't see that as being a solution either, that we're going to have background checks for, you know, transferring a firearm to my kid or <laughs> transferring it to my dad or, or, or whatever. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So I just wanted to put that video out there. If anybody's really interested in these laws, uh, again, you can go, um, you can probably find all this online. I did some research too, but I mean, you know, you can find all this. It's under U.S. Code, Title 18, Chapter Titled Firearms. And it's pretty much all the federal laws you know, relating to uh, firearms as far as what we would call gun running or straw sales, that kind of thing. So if you get a chance, check it out. Um, the best thing I can tell everybody, gun people out there, is be informed. Um, be aware, you know, and don't get caught up in all this hype and this um, emotional pathos thing that, uh, that the media is constantly putting out because it kills critical thinking, and uh, that's just not acceptable right now. So anyways, have a wonderful day, and uh, I'll see you guys on the flip side. Alvarado, out.